I think I got this. Let's do this. The Equalizer. So the Equalizer tells a story about a guy who just lives an OCD life. He does the same things every day, puts the spoon a certain way, puts the book over here, just reads books, looks like a normal guy. But then one day, a prostitute gets in trouble and he has to help her because he's like a fatherly figure to her. And when he helps her, shit hits the fan and now the whole Russian mob is after him and he has to protect himself and his loved ones. Who are his loved ones? Well, I guess the people he works with because it doesn't establish a family in this movie. It's just Denzel Washington by himself. And I call him Denzel Washington because he doesn't really have a name. They just call him Bob but we already know that's a fake name. So he has a secret life that we don't know about. He's not just some Home Depot worker. He can break your arm with just a thought. This is probably Denzel Washington's best performance in a long time. I like him in this movie. He just gives off this vibe like he might look like a harmless old guy with a unicorn cup, but he can kick your ass. I also like the directing by Antoine Fuqua. I think he directed Training Day and The Magnificent Seven, which is or two more Denzel Washington movies. This guy likes to work with Denzel Washington, apparently. This movie also stars Chloe Mortez, and she looks fine in this movie, but she also apparently gained weight for this role because she was talking to actual prostitutes who told her that she looked too skinny and that no man would want her. I don't know. Something like that. I was watching the behind the scenes. They said some stuff. This movie has good cinematography and the third act of this movie kicks ass. And when he kicks ass, he kicks ass. You could say the third act of this movie just kind of reminds you of Home Alone on steroids. There's these cool camera shots where Denzel's like really focused and he's like observing everything around him. He treats everything like a chessboard. He's like moving pieces in his mind on how he's going to take the whole room out. And when he takes these people out, it definitely gives this movie an R rating, the way he takes them out. Which is something I love. I love R rating. But unfortunately, this movie was like, I feel like it was advertised as an action movie, but we don't really get too much action. There's just... You know, the one bar scene, and then in the third act, we have the big Home Depot scene, slash Home Alone, where he starts taking people out. But other than that, everything's just like a slow build-up of him just trying to figure out who his nemesis is, and how he can stop them, and cripple them in their finances. So it's more of that. Another thing I did not like about this movie was this one Boston character, who's just a, a cliche Boston guy with a Boston accent, and he just kept saying f and he said f so many fing times I couldn't fing believe it. It was fing unreal. This guy said f so much he could have broke a swear jar in half. And of course, we got the cliche like bad guys from Russia, because you know, Russia's the bad guy of this century. Everybody loves to pick on Russia now, because fuck Russia. Yeah, I know, they're bad. And they always gotta give like the bad guys like a thousand tattoos, like a ridiculous amount of tattoos. And the main nemesis looks like a dork, but he's got tattoos all over his body. So it's like his face shouts dork, but his body shouts criminal. It's confusing. And there's a scene where he like strangles and kills somebody. It's not really a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. He strangles and kills somebody and it's like, why? Did, did that benefit you at all? It's just to show you how crazy you are. Yeah, I already knew you were crazy when you first popped up with all your tattoos. And there's like a weird camera shot that shows his tattoos just to establish how much fake ink this guy got. I don't get it. Just doesn't make sense. I don't care how many tattoos you got, that doesn't make you evil. And some of the bad guy dialogue felt kind of cheesy, like Hollywood-like. It's like, really? Is that... Is that how he would talk? I don't think it is. I'm not sure what kind of background training Denzel Washington's character got, but he apparently knows how to speak a lot of languages. He's speaking Spanish in one scene to his Spanish co-worker who's trying to help lose weight so he can become a security guard. You know, because he's just walking around helping everybody. He's like an everyday guy helping people because he's awesome. But then in another scene, he's like hearing people speak Russian and he understands it fluently. And I'm just like, really? Really? You try that at home. Try it right now. Speak three languages. I mean, ich spreche auch eine andere Sprache, aber das meiste, das ich auf Russisch sagen kann, sind ein paar Worte. It's impossible to understand and speak another language, almost. You can't do it. I felt it kind of coincidental, you know, just for, just to add more kind of fun stuff for Denzel to do in this movie. It was just kind of coincidental, like, after he does the first initial act that gets the ball going and the mafia has to come and figure out who killed these guys in his bar. All of a sudden, like, Denzel's life is just filled with crime. He's just witnessing it left and right. Before this, it was all cherry and rainbows in the sky. And now it's like just there's bad cops everywhere and people mugging people in a Home Depot in the middle of the fucking day. And there were some things that I wish they would have shown that they didn't. Like, when he, this guy robs the store, he later goes and gets the money back. But we don't get to see that. We just see him cleaning off a hammer, cleaning the blood off of it. Like he just like beat the shit out of that guy or killed him. But we didn't get to see it. And it's like, why not? Show it. We want to see it. But all in all, I would say this movie is fun to watch. I mean, it has, it kind of has a slow build. There's not a lot of action. So don't go into this movie thinking that it's just going to be 
action throughout the whole thing and a lot of shooting. That's just like the third act for 10 minutes or so. And then there's like that one bar scene where he kicks ass. But other than that, this movie is just more of like a, a revenge thriller, I would say. So if you're a fan of that, I would say this movie is definitely worth adding to your collection. So I would go out and buy it. Have you seen The Equalizer 1? Not 2, 1. I haven't seen the second one yet, but I'm going to review it and I'm going to show it to you. But have you seen The Equalizer? Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed this video at all, please like and share with all so that all your family can see my awesome videos that I work so hard on. Please. And remember to click on that sexy face in five seconds to subscribe. And until next time, I'll be busy.